Welcome to this predicted paper from OnMaths. This paper represents the best guess for the upcoming exams. Please use this paper in addition to your other revision. You can complete a unique version of this paper by going to our OnMath site. OnMaths is full of free content to help you prepare for your exams, such as topic-based papers, demon questions, and mini-mocks. If you like what we do, please consider subscribing. So 7 times 10 to the power of 4 is going to be 7 and it's going to be 70,000. And 9 times 10 to the power of 7 will be 9, 90 million. And so when you add them together, you get 9, 0, 0, 7, 0, 0, 0, 0. Now if you have access to a calculator, if this is on the calculator paper, uh, then you can just type it into your calculator. Some people think there's a quick way of doing this, like adding the 7 and the 9. There isn't. You've just got to work out what this number is, work out what this number is, and add them together. So to simplify 10 to 22 to 26, I'm going to have to find something that I can divide the 10, the 22, and the 26 by. The biggest number I can do that for is 2. So if you look, uh, 10 can be divided by 5, but nothing else can. 22 can be divided by 11, but nothing else can. And 26 by 13, but nothing else can. The only thing we can divide all of them by is 2. So that will be 5 to 11 to 13. So the answer is 5 to 11 to 13. The first thing we need to do is work out the area of the floor. And you will notice that this is a trapezium. So with a trapezium, it, the formula is half a, B, uh, a plus B times H. And A and B are the parallel sides. So these ones are the parallel sides. And the height is the one connecting the two um, bases, the two parallel sides. So we're going to start off by writing down the formula. So it would be half A plus B H. So half times uh, 2.8 plus 1.2 times 11. And when we do that, we get 22. So the area of the floor is 22 metres squared. And it says here that the tiles are sold in packs which cover 3 metres squared. So if each pack covers 3 metres squared, we're going to do 22 divided by 3 which will be 7.33 packs that we need. Now obviously you can't get a 0.3 of a pack or 0.33 of a pack. So we're going to have to get 8 packs and just have some left over. So we'll need 8 packs in total. Okay, next thing we um, look at is the fact that the uh, Jenny has a 25% discount. Um, so we need to find out what... Um, 25% discount would do to the £18.60 for the tiles or for the pack of tiles and so what we're going to do is we're going to get the £18.60 and we're going to times it by 0 0.75 so we're just going to find um, three quarters of it because she has a 25% discount and that would be 1395 so that's um, the uh, tiles are going to cost £13.95. Um, now I've done this in pence and I've kind of muddled it together here. So really, let's just go back because I've kind of done this in pence. So that would be uh, 1,860 times 0 0.75. And so each pack will cost 1,395. And the reason we're doing this in pence is the answer needs to be given in pence. Uh, so I might as well just make that conversion now. And so it's going to be 8 lots of the 1,395 pence packs, which will cost in total 11,160 pence, or £111.60. But Jenny has £100 to spend, and we're asked how much extra does she need. So we're going to do the 1, 000, sorry, 11,160 take away the 10,000 pence that she has which will give us 
1160 pence so she needs to find 11 pounds 60 or 1160 pence from somewhere to find the largest weight this package could have been before it was rounded let's do a quick number line and we're going to just do it between the 24 and what it would round to next. Well, it's to the nearest kilogram, so the next thing it would round to is 25. The cutoff point for rounding is here. And that's going to be halfway between 24 and 25, which is 24.5. And that is actually going to be our answer. Now, some of you who are astute might realize that 24.5 would round to 25, but theoretically the biggest it can be is going to be 24.49 recurring. Let's just draw that a bit better. 24.49 recurring. And that is actually the same as 24.5. In your exam, however, you can write 24.49 recurring and you would get full marks, but for brevity, I would definitely recommend writing 24.5. Um, we can keep this as an interior angle, but it's actually sometimes easier to convert it to an exterior angle. And what you might know is that the sum of interior and exter exterior angles is going to be 180, because they will always form a straight line. So, to find the uh, exterior angle, all we need to do is 180 take away the 170 and that means it will be 10 degrees so we've already done a, f a different formula for exterior angle which is 360 divided by n and something we can do is we can just swap these two things around and so we can make the formula that n equals 360 divided by the exterior angle So 360 divided by the exterior angle, well, we know that the exterior angle is 10. Therefore, n is 360 divided by 10, which would be 36. The formula y equals mx plus c includes this m, and the m means the gradient. So we're, if we're looking for something that is parallel to y equals 9x plus 18, we're looking at this number here. And for it to be parallel, it needs to have the same gradient. So we could just write y equals 9x plus or subtract anything. Or we could just write y equals 9x. I'm going to say plus 5. I'm going to write this out just a bit bigger so we can see what's going on. And there are loads of different methods for expanding brackets. I'm going to use smile and rainbows. So smile there, rainbow there. And I always put a little notch here to remind me to times it. So we're going to do 4 times 8, which is 32 and x times x, which is x squared. And we're going to do 4 times 3, which is 12, and x is just there. So when we expand that, we get 32x squared plus 12x. Factorizing is the opposite of expanding. With expanding, we're multiplying out a bracket. With factorizing, we're putting something in a bracket. So I'm going to start by just putting the bracket down. Now I need to ask myself, what number can I divide out of 3x squared and 5x? Well, there's not going to be a number I can divide out, but they both have a, at least an x. Um, x squared obviously is x times x, and x uh, is just on its own for the 5x. So we're going to divide out the x. So I need to ask myself, what times x is going to be 3x squared? Well, obviously 3x. And then we ask ourselves, what times x is 5x? Well, that's just going to be 5. And if you were to expand that set of brackets, you will get 3x squared plus 5x. So we know it's the correct one. And so our answer will be x brackets 3x plus 5. The formula for the circumference of a circle is circumference equals pi times the diameter. In this question, we're given the fact that the circumference is 37.7 and we're asked to find the diameter. So if we put our lines in, all we need to do is divide both sides by pi. So we've got 37.7 divided by pi equals the diameter. And so that is, when you round, well, it's 12.00 blah, blah, blah. 
round to the nearest integer, that would be 12 centimeters. And we can try it by typing in 12 times pi, and we get what would round to 37.7. There's a lot going on with this question, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in all of the time signs that we don't normally show. So we've got 10 times 12x times y to the power of 4 times 13 times x to the power of 4 times y to the power of 4. And I'm going to reorder these to put the numbers together, first of all. And with multiplying, it doesn't matter which way around you do it. So I'm not changing anything. I'm going to put the x's together. And I'm going to put the y's together. So first thing to do is 9 times 13, which is just 117. Then we've got x to the power of 12 times x to the power of 4. Now we know when we multiply two powers of the same base, and the base is x on both of those, we just add the powers. So it's 12 plus 4, which is 16. So it would be x to the power of 16. And then y to the power of 4 times y to the power of 4, we just add them together, so it's y to the power of 8. The arc is a section of the circumference, and I'll show it on the diagram here. This is the arc. And to find the length of the arc, we use... Uh, a simple formula, and I'm just going to explain what the formula does. So the arc length is equal to the fraction of the circle that you've got. And we times that by the circumference of the circle. Now to find the fraction of the circle we've got, we work out the angle of the sector and we divide it by 360 because there are 360 degrees in a full circle. Times that by the circumference and circumference is just going to be pi times the diameter. The angle is 61 degrees. Now the diameter, if you imagine that the circle is all the way around, so it's a full circle, you can see the 6 centimetres here is the radius. So if we carry that on, there will be another 6 centimetres here, so the diameter will be 12. Just two lots of the radius. Type that into a calculator and we get 6.387, blah blah blah. And it says it wants it to two decimal places. So when we round that, it comes to 6.39. So this question is a simultaneous equations question. And so we're going to have to write down some equations. So it says two apples and three pears cost £3.80. So two apples, I'm going to call it A, A for the price of an apple, plus three pears, so 3P, cost £3.80. Now I'm going to do this as 380 just because it's easier to work with integers rather than decimals. And it says three apples, so 3A plus eight pairs cost £7.80 or 780 pence. Okay, so the first thing I do is try and get these numbers the same. So three and eight, um, they both go into 24. So I need to make them both 24. What some people do is they just label this A and this B. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to multiply everything in equation A by 8 so that this becomes 24. So it's going to become 8A. And so we're going to times the 2A by 8, which will be 16A plus 24P. And 380 times 8 is 3040. And we're going to do the same with B, but this time we're going to times it by 3. So we're going to have 3B. And we're just going through everything here and we're timesing it by 3. So 9A plus 24P, which is good. That's what we wanted. And 780 times 3 is 2,340. So now we've got both of these the same coefficient. What we can do is we can eliminate going downwards. Now, if they are the same, the S in same is the S in subtract. If they were different signs, so if these weren't both positive, if one of them was negative, different, the D in different is the D in add. So here they are the same, so we are going to subtract. 
and we're going to subtract going downwards. So we're going to start off by doing, and I can just do a little line here to show what we're doing. So we're subtracting going downwards, and we're going to do 16a take away 9a, which will be 7a. 24p take away 24p, which is nothing, which is why we did that. It's to eliminate them. And then 3040 take away 2340 will be 700. Then I can put my lines in. And all I need to do now is just divide both sides by 7. And I get A equals 100. So we know that apples cost 100, or one pound. We need to work out what pears cost. So I just need to pick one of the equations. I'm just going to pick this top one here and I'm going to write it out. But instead of A, we know that A is a pound or 100 pence. So plus 3P equals 380. So that's going to be 200 plus 3P is 380. And then again, I'm just going to draw my lines down. And we're going to subtract 200 from both sides. So it's going to be 3p equals 180. And then we're going to just divide by 3 both sides. And we've got p equals 60. So a pair costs 60. Now we can check this by using the other equation there. So 3 times 100 is 300, plus 8 lots of 60 is going to be, what's that, 480? So that's going to be 780. So we know that we've got it right. I'm going to start by just drawing the line y equals minus 2. So the line y equals minus 2 will be a horizontal line at minus 2, which will be down here. Next, we're going to do the line x equals minus 1, and that will be a vertical line at minus 1. Now, here's a bit of a problem we've got no equal to underneath it. And whenever we don't have an equal to, we do a dash line. So we're going to do a dash line here. OK, the last graph is a little bit harder. We've got y is, or I'm going to do y equals x minus 3. And it's going to be a perfectly diagonal line, but down to minus 3. Going to be this line here, uh, about there, but it's it's going to be dashed because we don't have an equal to. So, so it's going to be a dashed line like that. So if they have an equal to underneath, then it will be. Um, a solid line. If they don't have an equal to underneath, it will be a dashed line. Okay, now we've got to work out where the region is. So we've drawn the lines, uh, and the lines are either dashed or solid, and so they're perfect, but we've got to work out where the region is. So we can see on the first one that y is greater than or equal to minus 2. So it's going to be above this line. Okay. You can see on the next one that x is greater than uh, minus 1, so it's going to be this side. So we've already narrowed it down to somewhere in this region here. And here we're given that y is greater than x minus 3. So what we do here is we pick a point. So I'm going to pick a coordinate, and I'm going to pick 0, 0. 0, 0 is always my go-to one. Write out the equation. And I'm just going to put a box here, so x minus 3, and fill in the uh, coordinates for 0, 0. So 0, blank, 0, minus 3, 0, blank, 0, take away 3 is minus 3. So what is 0 compared to minus 3? Well, 0 is greater than minus 3. And therefore, this coordinate is on the correct side, because if we look, we've got y is greater than x minus 3 is our region that we're looking for. So we're looking for that, that's good. And so our region will be anywhere in this bit here. Anywhere at all. And you're asked normally to <clears throat> mark it with an R. 
<clears throat> I'm kind of coloring it in just because your R can be anywhere within this region. It can actually be at zero, zero, anywhere within the yellow region would give you the mark. So we're told that Y is inversely proportional to the cube root of X. And to get rid of this proportionality sign here, we just convert it to an equals and times the right hand side by K, which is represents a constant. Now we now need to figure out what that constant is. So we're going to feed in the value of y and x that's given to us in the question. So we've got 10 equals k over cube root of 343. Okay, next thing we're going to do is um, we're going to solve that. So put our lines in. Now the cube root of 343 is 7. So we can actually just, it's a lot easier. And we're just going to times both sides by 7. So k equals 70. And we're just going to rewrite this. But instead of um, k, we're just going to write 70. So y equals 70 over the cube root of x. Whenever you're asked to work out a proportion um, of items in a histogram, you can actually do it by just counting the squares. Um, so in the first um, first um, bar, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So there are 12 squares here. The next one, you've got kind of four half squares. So that'll be two squares in total. And then we've got four squares in the last one. So all together, we have for the amount of squares, we have 12 plus 2 plus 4, which will be 18. So it's 18 squares in total. Now it says that we're looking for between 25, which will be here, and 45, which will be here. So we count the squares in this little interval. So there are 3 here, and there's half a 1 here. So the... Um, squares between 25 and 45 I should say dash 45 25 to 45 is three and a half okay so we've got three and a half um, in total or 3.5 uh, out of a possible 18 so we just need to do 3.5 divided by 18 to work out the proportion and that gives us 0 0.194 blah 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 it says it wants it's two decimal places that would be 0 0.19 with this question we're going to first of all have to find a length before we can find the length af and it does involve us thinking in 3d uh, what i find sometimes useful though is to draw kind of a 2d representation of the 3d so I'm going to look at this triangle here, and I'm going to notice that I need to find length BF. That's going to be my objective at the start of this. So I'm just going to draw out this triangle again, but in 2D just to make it a bit easier. And BF is this length here, this is 6, and then this is 9. Um, so we're going to use Pythagoras, so it will be sort of a squared plus b squared equals c squared so it'd be 6 squared plus 9 squared equals bf squared 6 squared plus 9 squared is 117 and then we just get our solving bit in just to square root both sides and I can leave this as square root 117 for now Okay, the actual um, length that we want is um, AF, which is this one here. And I'm going to create the right angle triangle using this bit here. So let's just draw that out. Now the top bit is AB, which is the same as the bottom. It's going to be 14. It's going to be the same as EF. Uh, then the BF we've just found is root 117, and we're looking for AF. 
And this is the right angle. I didn't show the right angle on the other one, but it should be there. Okay, so we're going to use our a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And a squared is 14 squared plus square root of 117 squared equals a f squared. So 14 squared um, is going to be 196. Now, 170, root 117 squared is just going to get rid of the square root. So it's just going to be 117. And when you add them together, you get 313. And again, get our solving lines in. Square root both sides. And this time we are actually going to square root 313 because we need a decimal answer. So it would be 17.691 blah blah blah. It's equal to AF. And it says to two decimal places. So that's going to be 17.69 centimetres. You can complete a unique version of this paper by going to our OnMath site. OnMaths is full of free content to help you prepare for your exams, such as topic-based papers, demon questions, and mini-mocks. If you like what we do, please consider subscribing.